minute till the end. Don't, don't, don't win. Testing. Yep. Good, good. So, before we jump into this, for probably the fourth and final part, uh, we're actually going to sit here and uh, kind of look at this look at this intro screen, since all the information we know and things like this. So, if we look here, we can see an old photo of, of uh, our main character. It looks like he's in, like, military uniform. Um, I'm assuming... Here is his wife. This one over here, I believe, is his daughter. Stuff that I never noticed before. As well as he's got um, some kind of certification up there. Oh, it's his officer license. So, you know, I'm just sitting here staring at this, and we're almost done with the game, and there's a couple seconds left till the end break. Might as well look at the back. <laughs> so, welcome everybody who's ever there. This will most likely be, as I've probably stated a thousand times, the final part of Chicken Police. As we were on the final act, uh, we should be able to finish it tonight. We just went to the asylum. Uh, with are terrible secrets behind Wesser that he has a, well, terrible, as a twin brother. He's crazy. We'll uh, see where this goes. Just getting ready to interview. Honestly, I wasn't expecting Draft. anything good, but Ooh, just I was appearing. Let's hope. We'll skip to this. Why well, it started so far back? Um, but we were getting ready to interview her. She's our biggest fan. So we have to speak to of her again. All the great wild ones. Greetings, Miss. Is it really you? Yes, we promise. Well, uh, yes. Yes, it really is. <laughs> I do. I still do. I can see her face. I'm afraid so. Oh, of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Uh, miss, we'd like to ask. Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read everything about love her. you and your adventures, and I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Indeed. You can't imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. Um, we really can. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Take a deep breath, Miranda. Take a deep breath. I wonder if it Are updates your okay, name with. Yes, it does. I am. It says I just Miranda. needed some air. So, dear detectives. Santino and Martin. She's Miranda. She's a giraffe. She's the nurse you? at Well, uh, yes, uh, we have title. some questions, if you don't mind. I'd love Apparently to she's our biggest all fan. Of your questions, detectives. You can't tell by her voice. She is our biggest fan. <laughs> it's not you. Uh, let's see. Miranda the nurse. Giraffe. Female. Full of life. Full of hope. Full of almost everything and she is a big fan of us unfortunately an overly nice nurse we met behind the desk of the inside her name is miranda and she is a really huge fan of the chicken police <laughs> anything else we can say i still can't believe it's really you neither can we you can't, <laughs> we can't believe it's us wonderful it is that i can help you in one of your cases I thought you were marty by the way does this mean it will become a new book and maybe I will be in it? Uh, miss, those books aren't really... Don't even tell me. No, no, no. I don't want to know. Let it be a surprise instead. No, I, I didn't mean... <laughs> Leave it to me, Sonny. I'm good at this. Thank you, Miss. Your words are very flattering, and we are honored. No, I thank you. I'll never forget this day. Oh, we hope you do. Either, that's for sure. We're happy to bring you joy, Miss. Anytime. Okay, right, well, let's see what questions we got. Are we can just let hey, we can ask yes, her. Uh, what can you tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War. Oh, and wait. During the war, it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous special. Quetzal. The place seems pretty. Oh, he's a snake. Do many people work here? We have 32 residents and oh, 7 dang. nurses, including me. 
We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff, and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. I see. Now, this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Exactly. Practitioner. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. Quite a guy. He certainly is. Huh? And that is one hell of a day of Dr. Sesusios Quinzelsko. So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Psycho what? Unraveling the mind. It's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's really <laughs> good to know. Martin McChicken. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet uh, other important persons? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, like uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, uh, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately, I don't think he has time right now. How could he be busy with the not see the chicken police? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. All the time. I thought so. Uh, we're gonna ask now, what can you say Bears. about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Of course. Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only oh, wear oh. them inside the institution. Huh, I see. Can you tell us who this was? does belong to one of our residents. Oh, man. But I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more regulations. due to regulations. Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Miranda, this case is a matter of life and death. Lives <laughs> are in your hands. You'll be in the next book. All right. All right. I'll do it. Albert Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Figures. Just as we thought. Thank you, Miranda. We'll never forget this. Please, don't make me blush. And don't tell anyone you heard it from me. It's all right. We'll only write it down in our notebook. I promise. Oh, can you tell us about Wessler? So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. Please wait here. Thank you. We should go to reception first. We went to reception. Dr. Quetzal will see you. He's waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. What a surprise. It's enough to mention Wessler's name and all the doors are open. Isn't that crazy how that works? I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but... Do you think Albert is in danger? Danger? Uh -oh. What do you mean? We haven't heard from him since he disappeared. And we're really, really worried. I see. Uh -oh. uh, we don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. Great wild ones protect him. Where is he? No idea, Marty. The smell ugh, of all its fruit. <laughs> I'll never get used to it. Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty. Oh, man. But they're they racist. Exactly they're the same about us. Exactly. Great wild ones. You scared the hell out of me. I already sensed your arrival from afar. You know, snakes have a different sense of smell. And birds used to be our prey once upon a time. I'm sure they still are. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. Lucky. Please, take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? Oh, uh, let's have a look around first. Your look office at the is uh, rather Puritan. <laughs> Simple, I mean. Ain't that the truth? Well, yes. I can't let my mind wander from my work. I only keep what's essential in my office. I see. Well, it makes sense. I guess, but consider boost to be essential so much. <laughs> can't turn off the lights, which is very unfortunate. Why do you have bars on your windows? 
because it's a room like all the others, and I'm just an animal too, okay, like that's all deep. our residents. With the significant difference of you being a doctor and not a patient, am I right? It's not as big of a difference as you'd think. <laughs> Uh, An isle of reason in a sea of insanity. Insanity is such a strong word. You prefer it. And it's mostly an abstract idea. Where does insanity start? And how long is one not insane? Interesting questions. Am I normal? <laughs> or are you? Maybe neither of us. You see, that's something I think about a lot nowadays. If you like, I can give you an appointment. <laughs> oh, I'd appreciate oh, the talk. chance, Sonny. Don't miss it. We're already here. Marty, clock up. Uh, what other information did we get? I would imagine it's just about... Doctor. Old. Distant. Professional. He gives me the creeps. Oh, he's a uh, tree pilot. Yes, dear scientist, try to push. What else do we have? Uh, Albert. I have a bingo. Disappeared from the asylum. A snake. I can't help it, but they make my feathers stand on end. Oh, I mean, to make a lot honest, of people's feathers stand on it. Your visit is anything but a surprise. I could even say I was expecting Ooh. it. <laughs> What an introduction. <laughs> Please forgive me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle of things. How very rude of me. Right, on here. My name is Dr. Sessuous Quetzalcoatl. Oh my gosh. Just call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Not the predatory uh, division. We're used to it. Certainly. We have some questions it's about his watch. Patients, if you don't mind, we'd like to talk to him, if that's possible. Please be specific, detective. Look, Doctor, we're too tired to play cat and mouse. Not that snake and chicken sounds any better. <laughs> Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two detectives. We know you know it's about Albert Wessler. Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Oh, well, yeah, just yes. a good name. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here who's also a very particular medical case. Now, Makes him particular. that's much more interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Because Albert regrettably has disappeared and you are police detectives, I have no reason not to talk to you. Of course, I'm at your service. But you must understand, I can't disclose information <laughs> oh, well, isn't that about my patients. Not even if it's a matter of life and death. Nope. Everything's a matter of life and death in here, detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, not the body. Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Oh, shoot. Please, detective, just do your job, and I'll do mine. Oh, well, we can ask him. Well, let's just talk to him again real quick. So, what do you want to... Let's see. Okay, I think he has nothing more to say. Um... Tell me what about the insane asylum. What kind of this, exactly? I assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum. It used to be a mansion. Construction started during the occupation in 622. Then it stood empty for almost a century, century. until finally it went to the crown of Clawville when Hector's great-grandfather took the throne. The rest is his. Oh, I mean, everything you said up to that point How is history. How long have you been working here? 
I've worked here for more than 30 years. Oh, hey. But it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. So if I count correctly, as soon as it went to the crown, it was seized by your family. That's almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. Too, what a lovely too. inheritance. Uh, you tell me about Albert. Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time, his first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Schizophrenia. Panic attacks and schizophrenia. Was he brought here immediately after the first signs that something wasn't right? You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity is that animals are ashamed of it. Oh, they're just That's like people. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. I couldn't have said it better myself. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. Indeed, they were rather poor, but we offer our services gratis. Then how do you sustain yourselves? By the grace <laughs> of the treasury of King Hector the oh, Third, of course. Confronted? I wouldn't have guessed that. My family and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. I mean, Thentino. it does kind of make sense, or else he wouldn't have given... Tell me, Doctor, do you know Madame Zavas? Just like everybody else, I've heard of her. But I never had the pleasure of meeting her in person. I'm sure she's an interesting <laughs> face. You could say that. Oh, you can be sure about that. I'd gladly get you two together if I had the chance. A spare cell would suit her very much. Is that so? As it turns out, she likes small, narrow, secret places. <laughs> oh, I see. What a coincidence. Uh, we're going to look at the watch animation. I don't like that. Um, do we get clue wise people? Uh, Professor's family has covered the mental health facility and its estates for more than 100 years. Quite a heritage. Uh, well, he seems to be close to the royal family. Which I don't remember have the king it's the people no i don't think so so i don't remember what animal he was half century octop occupation this foundation an attempt to conquer clawville has only been made once the half century occupation started in 622 and lasted until 677 during this time for our empire took over all of Clawville's territories except its colonies, which in the end, with the help of Slalosa and Alva Slavia, took back control of Clawville. Alright, let's get to it. Hmm, Dr. Quetzal's a real mystery, but I can turn that to my advantage. I just need to focus on the strangest pieces of the puzzle. Okay, we gotta focus. Uh, he does not like us at all. So when did Albert become a resident of your? So I don't know how he could see me. Albert I think his eyes only look left and right. Albert, or Ibn, as you call him, arrived here almost exactly four years ago. Could you describe that day uh, more specifically? It was not long after New Year's Eve, maybe the first week of the year, if I'm not mistaken. It was sleeting that day, wind was banging incessantly on the windows, the power was going out for short periods of time. Sounds like a wonderful what day. What was your first impression of them? I already knew the Wessler name, I knew who they were. Or at least I knew one of them, Hobart Wessler. He was famous. Gangster, moneylender, celebrity, lover. And so? Albert? He was new to me, an invisible grey ghost. The family had tried to keep his existence a secret. Why? Because they were ashamed of him, of course, Mr. Featherland. Yeah, yeah. That's, how it That's why my family doesn't talk about me. What was your first impression of him? He was silent, 
but observed everything that surrounded him. His eyes. I don't know. You can't even look at his eyes to be honest. Never stopped for a second. Was he afraid? Well, I wouldn't say so. It seemed to me that he wanted to move into our institution voluntarily. It looked as if he couldn't wait to be here, alone, locked up in silence and darkness. Didn't you think of that as unusual? Of course I did, but who am I to judge? It was rather special treatment. Da, 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 da. Uh, I got what kind of special, special treatment did Albert get? You know, Master if an stuff. institution like ours has to accept a Wessler as a guest, there's bound to be some favoritism. And complete secrecy, I guess. Yes, but that's the case for all our patients, Mr. Featherland. Of course. So in what way did he receive more than the others? Basically, we don't admit anyone into our institution without a complete and thorough prior assessment. In the case of Albert, we put that aside. Straight in. So you didn't even know if he had anything wrong with him? Initially, no. He was more of a guest than a patient. Hmm. Uh, late to you seems like a really weird question. Mysterious. Take the details. Well, it could be part of the day trip, half. Uh... How did you see, see Albert, Albert when you first met? met? Albert was shy and reserved, like a ghost. He almost never touched anything. It was evident he was exceptionally intelligent. He measured and observed everything around him. What else? He was delicate and graceful, almost like a woman. Yes. He was rather feminine. He was an artist, Mr. Featherland, a magnificent painter, and rather good writer, too. Sometimes I even heard him sing. Why did he have to be locked up? I asked the same thing at first. That was plus 20. That was a good one. Are well. you telling me... Albert had he did have multiple personalities. We found out very quickly that there was no other reason for the cause of his seizures. He had a cold and calculating personality who sometimes, especially on stormy days, took the reins over their shared mind. He had these seizures from the beginning. Yes, Mr. Featherland, but they started to intensify after Albert left our institution for the first How time. How did he leave? He did what? Left the institution. More than once? Oh, yes, Mr. Featherland. Albert left the institution on several occasions until the last time when he failed to come back. Wetzel's not only very observant, but he's addicted to details. I must focus on that if I want to get closer to the truth. Focus. focus. Addicted to details. <laughs> uh, he's confused. Uh. And when why? and why did Albert leave the institution for the first time? It was about two years ago. Mr. Hobart Wessler appeared and demanded we let his brother go free. Naturally, we obliged. Demanded. We had no idea if we'd ever see him again. But you did. He returned the same day. Albert was ecstatic. He was unrestrained. I could almost say <laughs> happy. That was unusual for him. 
I had never seen him like that before, Mr. Featherland. He just smiled and stared at the empty wall for hours. Did he ever tell you what happened to him outside? No, of course he did. Oh. <laughs> and I had a good relationship. He was working on a painting. Oh, that's what the corner piece what is for. painting of a lovely lady cat. Oh, exactly. So you already knew about that. Yes, Dr. Quetzal, I've seen it. FT. Uh... Oh. Mm hmm. Did Harper tell you about his relationship with his brother? Painting. Let's go Did at the top tell one. You about his relationship with his brother. Rarely. He respected and loved his brother, but when he came to talk, he was usually angry. Oh, it's not a good sign. Oh, why? No fear, jealousy, frustration, rivalry, maybe all of these combined. Oh, that was a minus five. Okay, we should have asked about the painting. So Albert left on many occasions to continue Shoot. working on the painting. Exactly, Mr. Featherland. Every time he came back, he was like a different person but unfortunately his seizures also multiplied and became more dangerous oh, more shoot. dangerous albert was hurting himself and on one occasion he even tried to hurt me it was unprecedented it seemed his confined personality was taking over their shared mind entirely peace by peace. Do you think the painting <laughs> caused it? Not the painting, Mr. Featherland. Something else. It's subject. Exactly. Uh... He was obsessed. Right until that fateful day when he returned to us for the last time. What exactly happened that day, Doctor? It wasn't Hobart who brought his brother back that day, but two of his gorillas. Not literally, <laughs> I mean. And Albert was in a terrible, terrible state. What happened to him? I don't like to talk about that, Mr. Featherland. It could be vital to the case, Dr. Quetzal. Don't back down. Keep going. Oh, fight, fight. Right. There's no use turning back now. Gosh. So, Albert's tongue was torn out, or cut off, I don't know exactly, and he was blinded in one eye, or rather, one of his eyes was missing entirely. So you're saying Albert was brought back horribly mutilated? Yes. And they didn't give any explanation as to what had happened. They simply told me it was <laughs> some kind of accident. He just fell down Dr. the stairs. Quetzal is cold and professional, but he's also very confused. Maybe it's cruel, but I must exploit his vulnerability if I want to learn everything about Albert. Ready. Focus, confused. Okay, plus 20. Uh, top you one? didn't believe Albert had an accident, is that right? Of course not. I'm not naive. I knew immediately that Albert had been severely battered, and I was sure it had been his Edward? brother, Hobart. Well, we don't know that, Dr. Quetzal. Would you defend a monster? I mean, I might. Take it easy, Doc. One of the most critical elements of my job is not to make assumptions. You're absolutely right, Mr. Featherland. I'm sorry I got oh, carried good away. Luck. It's all right. Happens to everyone. Oh, God, that was minus 20.
Pull yourself together, Doctor. <laughs> what was Albert's condition after the incident? Mind your tone, Detective. Sorry, Doc. I can see you're disturbed by these memories. How could I not be? I'm not a monster. We're talking about a mutilated animal here. You're not a monster. Well, what was he like after the incident? Even more silent than ever. No surprise, I suppose. He was not only silent in words, but also in his soul and spirit. What do you mean by that? Yeah. He never painted anything again, and his seizures completely stopped. Another minus five. Let me start this. Yeah, to retry. Mm. So I got that one. He, 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 of course. Uh, kind of special treatment. Uh, how did you see him? him? I, are you? Yeah. Oh, so Albert could just walk in and off. What was the pr Albert? Oh, sir. Sure, I. Did yeah. Albert tell you how ah, he dang felt it. about the stupid mm, Doctor Quetzal's? If I click, so let's click over here. It was not long after New Year's Eve. Maybe the. F uh. What kind of? You uh, don't you see how Albert? You see are you telling Personality. me it's not only very Okay. When and why where? Okay, this is where I messed up. So we're left on many occasions. Uh Has this Albert one. ever talked to you about Natasha? Natasha. Only in superlatives, as if he wasn't talking about a real person, but an ethereal being, about an angel or a demon, something that is not of this Obsession. world. And what did you think about this fantasies? We are in an institution where almost everyone is hallucinating on a daily basis, Mr. Oh. Featherland. It didn't really bother me, but the fluctuations of positive and negative were more disturbing. Thanks, Doc. I didn't understand a word, but <laughs> I think I get the point. I was still by his tent. So Albert left. Dr. Quetzal is cold and prof... Right. Maybe it's not easy for you to talk uh, about did it. Did you examine? Did you examine his wounds thoroughly? I'm not that kind of doctor, Mr. Featherland. But even I could determine Seven, if his tongue was either cut out or bitten off. And his eye was gouged out. He also had several broken bones. But there's no doubt it wasn't an accident. I don't believe it was, Mr. Featherland. I totally agree. <laughs> hey, give me plus two. Pull yourself together, Doc. Did that one. So you're stuck with the minus five. What happened then? How did Albert disappear? Again. A few weeks later. Hobart came to visit Albert one more time. Albert had been in terrible condition by then. We even had to transfer him to another cell. A more safe, safe one. one. What did Hobart do during the visit? He didn't do anything. He just sat and watched his brother, who was <sighs> in an almost vegetative state by then. Couldn't you manage to draw anything out of him? You or Hobart? Nothing. For a while, he was trying to signal something. Perhaps he was too afraid. And most likely his fingers had been broken too, so he couldn't even write. Do you think Hobart could have killed Albert? It's horrible to say it. Oh. I'm sure of it. How did he disappear in the end? Did someone come for him? That's what's most eerie. 
tip has disappeared. He simply disappeared. His door, which only I had a key for, was open. Did anyone see anything? No one. We interrogated the staff, even the patients. He simply vanished off the face <laughs> of the wilderness. We don't know what happened to him. Unfortunately, I have a hunch. Thank you, Doctor. No. You've been a great help. Oh, well, I'm glad I could be of help. But please, I now must attend to my work. Okay, we have understand, fun. Doctor. Thank you. Oh, how bad is my question? 60%. So we did get a new clue. Where's the new clue? Have it too. Yeah, we do. Oh, there's nothing there. Oh, it's on the second page. He then most likely killed his brother. Albert made Zip dispose the body. Seems possible at the moment. Uh, Cole deserves an endlessly professional in his own field, but the thing that happens to Albert even got a rise out of him. Surprise there, I think. Uh, anything else to say? Quite shocking information. I think you understand why we kept it a secret. Well, if yeah. it wasn't for Mr. Wessler's demand, we'd never let any of our patients walk freely outside our institution. Then the, uh, the accident happened. Accident? <laughs> we didn't believe it, not for a second. After Albert came back to us horribly mutilated, he was different. Different how? If someone got one of his eyes poked out <laughs> and his tongue torn out, he'd be different, but not like this. Albert was a different person. We believe you, Doctor. So, can we take a look at Albert's cell? I'd rather call it his room. Mr. Wessler lived in exceptional circumstances. Well, he had two rooms, did he? Thanks to the Wessler name, I guess. Yes. Well, we try to make all of our patients stay as comfortable as possible, but Albert certainly enjoyed mm, special favoritism. <laughs> I hope you don't mind if we take a look around in there. That's not going to bother anyone. Oh, cool. Well, that's, uh, surprising. I've never seen a cell like this before, that's for sure. I wouldn't mind living here myself. Oh, it seems oh the crazy art. Wessler gets you privileges. And a healthy dose of danger. Mostly that, yeah. Let's take a good look around. I'm sure we'll find some answers here. I can almost smell them. Well, I smell... Paint, ink, plaster, some kind of slight smell. oil, <laughs> aging paper, slight smell of rat, and great expectations. Oh, shoot. What the dickens? Unmistakable. Yeah. This place is bad for you, pal. But if you've already jump-started your beak holes, then sniff out the solution. I'm on it, boss bird. Go for it. Sniff for me, Marty. Oh shoot, you're in our book. Take a police story. You know, I don't think he had it so bad in here. You mean, apart from being separated from everyone you love in an ancient mansion filled with madmen? <laughs> eh, you're right. As always. Oh, there's a lot of stuff on the writing desk. Identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. Crazy. Two men and one woman. Nothing good ever comes of that. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Of all the wild ones, Marty, please, stitch up your beak, okay? Just use your imagination, old bird. I... Uh, they're not. 
scribbles, newspaper articles, study papers, poems, perfect chaos. Just like the troubled mind of a troubled fella. Yeah, but there's still a kind of order in it. It's just too intricate for you to comprehend. Oh, shit. If you say so, boss. Uh, there's a letter. Look at that. A letter. Oh, I know. Then a second. Painting. Oh, that's a really weird style. painting. It's very familiar to me. You've been lonely for <laughs> too long, huh? Not funny, Marty. That's pretty good. It I'm not gonna laugh. A little. Yeah. So this is an original Albert Wessler. I think so. It's pretty good, I must say. And I saw something very similar in Natasha's room. You kept me out of it. Sorry, little boy. Maybe next time. Let's see anything else to look at about this creepy mural. No way. Is this some kind of puzzle? It could be. I don't be. think so. But we could still find something important here. A pattern, a sign. Police car. Everything. It's a cat. This car. There's a number. Oh, I could draw. Oh, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six. Just counting to eight. Wow. Oh, I could draw everywhere on it. <laughs> I imagine I'm supposed to highlight something or find some kind of pattern. Device. Infinity. The cat person with the hat. And it's like a couple of signatures. There's anything in these notes. Uh, let's see. I I know I don't exist. Don't exist because you don't see me. But I'm not what you think I am. Don't think about me, do you? <laughs> Never. No. I think of you. Every day. Every minute. Always. My dreams. I have become one with him. Soul. You know who I am thinking about, right? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? That I'm there too, with you? Feel it, right? I can hold it on myself for long. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Please, I'm sorry. But I can't help it. The world is crashing down. The whole world is just rotting. Rotting. Everything is rotting around me. To get out of here. Become one with my destiny. And one with you. Forgive me. Albert was madly in love with Natasha. And would have done anything for her. I'm afraid he did exactly that. Identical twins. And looking at it, it's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure. I mean, it kind of has maybe that same symbol on it. Oh. What do you make of this? Apart from the fact the guy was totally insane? <laughs> I don't know. What should I? That maybe we've been chasing the wrong person all this time, Marty. What do you mean? Everything will be revealed soon. Why do you have to be so melodramatic all of a sudden? <laughs> if I'm right, <laughs> this will flip the whole case upside down. What's that, Sonny? A blurb from some horrible novel? I just have to think things through before I come to any hasty conclusions, Marty. Right. Oh, you're killing me. So... What now? Where to? Back to Clawville, where we can finally put all the pieces together. <sighs> oh, it's You're driving me crazy. <laughs> but all right, let's go home. You say that. Is this cell like, uh, like the others? I would rather call it a room. I wasn't, I wasn't done looking in his room. Can I 
What can you tell us about the woman in the photo we saw in Albert's room? Do you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko? Well, yes. I don't know much about her, but everyone heard her name and her voice around here. Did she ever visit this place? Never. But if you ask me, Natasha probably didn't even know Albert yeah. was a resident yeah, of the institution. And Albert, did he mention her often? Constantly. It was obvious he had an affection for Miss Katsenko, but I wouldn't have thought for a moment he could escape because of her. I wouldn't jump ahead, Doctor. Something else could be behind Albert's disappearance. Do you think so? All the signs clearly indicate this. Maybe they do, Doctor, but in my line of work, logic's not always the best advisor. <laughs> in 99% of cases. Exactly. But this one typically belongs to the remaining 1%. If you say so. So, detectives. I'm afraid we. I wouldn't. Well, but I hope. <laughs> not on a. Exactly. Uh, could I not go back in his room? Still wanted to look around. Oop. Oop. Farewell, Miranda, dear. Uh, I guess we can't go back in his room. So, you'll remember my name? Forever, Miranda. Marty For McChicken uh, never forgets, ma'am. Oh. Furry gods. Let's go. <laughs> Goodbye, miss. It was a pleasure. Goodbye, gentlemen. And happy investigating. I'm sure it'll be fun. If there's anything I can help you with, please just ask. Thank you, Miranda. <laughs> You've oh, yeah, already helped it. enough. Can we ask her anything else? Security things. Okay, so we can't even go back to his room. Sucks, so I can't figure out this theory. All art kind of sucks. Yeah, it's kind of upsetting. much longer don't worry sonny i was born to do this concentrate marty for the god's sake can you drive if you're not a fucking lunatic shut up and shoot the big feather pillow shoot the tires I am. Uh, I'm shooting the best I can, Sonny. There, I did it. <laughs> Whew. Well, that was close. It was. A little too close for my taste. Are there more info about him? My belief. Wessler is desperate. He knows if we survive, he's done for. Well, come on, what did you work out? Will you tell me already? Sure. Let's put the picture together, piece by piece. Let's start from the beginning. So, we got a case. Okay, start from the beginning. Uh, Natasha's secret? I know we need a clue. Painting. Okay. Connect the dots. Show us the painting. Second one? Painting. No. No. Oh, I 
That's three. Secret. Okay. Natasha tried to show up the painting. Uh Oh, it's a clue. A flutter? Photo. And that painting would have shown us the way. That Albert Weston is still need to find. Oh, I see. To Gibbon and Albert Wessler. Albert painted Natasha, so he met her on more than one occasion. Clue. Twins, fatal love. Which made Albert. Escape from asylum. On love. Man, there's no secret hideout. Oh. Give the asylum a bad man. Fall in love with Natasha. Yeah. And so on a fateful night, he killed, he killed his, his brother, brother so he could take so his place. So he could take his place in secret and win Natasha's heart. Is closed. So what happens now? The inevitable, Marty. We're going to the Wessler Mansion to confront Ibn with the facts. You mean Albert, right? Yeah, exactly. And of course, Natasha. Do you think she knew about it? Something stinks, Marty. The whole case seems too intricate. Hmm. Too many coincidences, right? Well, well, after ten years, you did <laughs> something, didn't you? Nine. <laughs> You're right. Huh. What? You just laughed, Sonny. What? No, I... I... I snorted. No, you laughed. Ah, just leave it, Marty. <laughs> I'll be telling this to my grandchicks. <laughs> All right, pal, that's enough. <laughs> okay, okay. So... Albert fell madly in love with Natasha and decided to have her for himself. And his best chance was to trade places with Ibn Wessler. So that's why the torn out tongue. Yeah, yep. Ibn couldn't squeal even if he wanted to. What a diabolical plan. More like insane. insane. <laughs> but why the messages then? Why the threats? Albert got what he wanted. He could have got away with it. I'm not a psychologist, Marty. But remember what the doctor told us. Albert has a seriously injured mind and a split personality. I think his two identities were at war with each other. So the messages were written by one of his personalities, consumed by jealousy? Yep. Something like that, Marty. But we can only learn the whole truth from him. You're right. So, are we going or what? We're going, Marty, to finally finish what we started. Well, if there's anything you'd like to do before, do it now, boss. You won't have a chance later. Oh, shoot. You're right, Marty. It's, the story. it's time to wrap everything up. Where are we? Do you remember that Jump. case with the goat? Uh, which one? When that demented wolf devoured the kids of a young goat mother, and in revenge, she cut open his stomach and filled oh it with Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do I remember? I'll never forget it. Hell, that was uh. a slaughterhouse. As far as I know, she even took the remains of the kids with her. But how did that come to mind? This was that shop. The goat mother was running it. 
They found the dead wolf in here. This? This one exactly? Good gods. Yeah, before it was closed down, when there was still some life here. Not even that now, just the void. Yeah, spook still. I love to live here. <laughs> Sonny, you're a creep. Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, dear. This Oggy spot street. is almost impenetrable. Strange, but somehow this time I feel it's a good omen. Really? How come? I don't know. It's like the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, you're not getting ready to die, are you, old man? <laughs> if we're going on a suicide mission, I think I should know. Why, haven't I told you yet? You're not funny. I see we're <laughs> ready. Shoot. You'll need a shotgun for this kind of deal, Marty. Maybe even that won't be enough. Nothing to fear while Bertha's here. Even less because you're here too with Mr. Sinclair, of course. Should I cry? That would be nice for a change. Oh, ah, hey, Bertha. Her Majesty Bertha the Second. My drumstick still hurts every time I see her. Be glad you're alive. Bertha rarely leaves witnesses. Photo of the letter to the badge, the Magnum. Talk to Marty. Ask Marty stuff. Look, Sonny, I think if we go now, there's no turning back. Not today, at least. So, are you ready? I'm still thinking about it, Marty. A new location. I just realized. Ibn at the Tsar Club. Yes, Marty. Albert's been Ibn for a long time now. Yeah. Do you remember what Natasha said about him? That he's been it's acting, acting strange. strange recently? Exactly. Like, he's not himself anymore. It was almost hitting us in the face, huh? Don't blame yourself, Marty. We couldn't have figured that out just by ourselves. The whole story's too twisted for that. Well, it's how we make our living, Sonny. And I'm sure we'll have plenty more twisted cases to come. Who knows, Marty? It's not up to us. It's mostly not up to us, in fact. Yeah, right. Do you think the asylum was in on it? I mean, covering up Albert's disappearance? You know that reptiles give me the creeps. One of them even set fire to that ship. But oddly enough, the doctor seemed honest to me. He seemed like a patient to me. Seriously, I thought everyone was crazy in that place. Yeah. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process, he doesn't become a monster. Are you still talking about the doctor? Huh. Good question. Uh, Albert's so letter. So, what's the plan? We shove the letter and our theory in his face and see what happens? Something like that, Marty. I think our presence will be enough for the truth to come out. I really hope you're right, Boss Bird. We have no other choice. So I hope so, too. Do you think it's a love triangle? I mean, could Natasha love Albert as well? Good question, Marty. But I don't think so. When I first spoke to Natasha, she told me she loved Ibn in her own way. In her own way, huh? And could she love two rats in her own way? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe she even suspected the truth, but didn't dare admit it, even to herself. Hmm. Oh, about Natasha. So, what do you think, now that it's clearer? I don't know, Marty, but I believe Natasha didn't mean to be bad. Not intentionally, at least. I'm not as sure of that as you are, boss. But we'll find that out pretty soon, I guess. I well. think Natasha was very much aware that wherever she goes, disaster follows her. Oh, that's kind of sad. It's not her fault, and she can't do anything about it. There are people like that. Uh, that's true. Really? You don't say. <laughs> Someone remarkably similar came oh, to mind right now. Oh, you can't be me. Meeting me, you can you? Me, right? Who can even read minds? Maybe you're right, Marty. Maybe you're right. Uh, what are you doing here, Lewis? 
You weren't awake all night because of us, were you? I've never been this excited, Sonny. Seriously, it is a great honor to be part of the team. What? What is it? You, Lewis. Don't stutter you anymore. Don't stutter anymore. What? Just now, you, you didn't stutter. Not even a little. Oh. I must be exhausted. It happens sometimes. And it's b b back. So, uh, thanks again, Lewis. I don't know. Lewis you is still. always get us out of trouble. Come on, b b boys. Don't even m m mention it. It is me who is grateful to be a b part of an adventure <laughs> of the ch ch chicken police. Maybe the last one, too. Hey, Sonny. Don't spoil his mood. He's so cute. B pardon me. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> They're really weird. So, you're going now to confront Mr. W w w Whistler. How do you know this? We have no other choice, Lewis. We're gonna see it through to the end. We've already come this far. You're brave, gentlemen. I'm honestly impressed. <laughs> well, the rabbit's on to something. This isn't about money. Not about courage or pride either. It's simply stubbornness. Most the truth. Oh, okay. Oh, we got a new place on the map. It's the residence. Ah, you know, Sonny, few places are as cozy as the hop dog at dawn. You have a point. The silence, the fog, the sunshine slowly Beautiful. devouring the sleep. Makes you want to cry. The smell. Yeah, the cobbler district has its own distinctive aroma, that's for sure. But wait, do you smell that? Ah, it seems Zip is ready with the first batch of coffee. <laughs> that's waiting only for us, my friend. Pretty sure it's not. Are they, uh, the uh, guy's gone. Well, he's out. He's brave indeed, or an idiot. They're often the same, Marty, and you should know. <laughs> uh, what's up, Zip? Hello, Zip. I see they kicked you out. You know, Sonny, they told me I could stay in there for 48 hours if I wanted. Well, maybe you should have done that. Shit, I had enough. Fuck it, you understand? <laughs> well, you interrogated me, you opened my eyes. I don't give a shit about him, about Wessler and his henchmen. Let them come if they want. It's not going to be easy for them. You can be sure of that. That's the zip we know and love. Thanks, Marty. So, uh, why are you here? Say One goodbye. Coffee before the end. Are you going to get him? We don't have a choice, Zip. We're grabbing the rat by the tail. No screwing around. No playing at night. Ah, I see Ibn's really got to you. Just Sonny. I'm like this all the time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Very well, I really don't have else to say. I kind of missed the fly guy. Oh, we go back to the weekend house? So, we're looking for more evidence? No, I was just thinking we could take another look. You know, just in case. Yeah. Mm, okay, sure. But... Don't even ask, Marty. You're really becoming sentimental. <laughs> One more word and I swear I'm... Yep, I'm gonna shut it. Is there anything else around here? You don't want to go in there oh, just man. like that. It's a closed crime scene. I hope you're just messing with me, Marty. Of course I'm messing with you. Let's get inside <laughs> and see how much the boys have messed up the place. Hey. You know, Sonny, when we entered the room and saw the girl, Deborah. Yeah, her body. I called you every name in the book inside my head. I just had enough, you know? I wanted to quit. What kept you with me? Was it just curiosity? No. I just wanted to see your downfall, boss. <laughs> oh, I wanted geez. to be there when you met your end, <laughs> get humiliated or even shot. Oh. Wow. Well, thanks for your honesty, Marty. But Such a good everything friend. Everything changed on the ship. On the ship? Why there? I don't know. 
being tied up with you, waiting for certain death. I know I lashed out at you, but in truth, I felt there was no place I'd rather be. It was my place on that fucking burning ship with you, oh, even man. if we both died there. Know what I mean? I think I do, Marty. I think I do. So, uh, it I guess it there's up. nowhere to go but forward, huh? Nothing left to do but kill a rat. As the chicken police. For the last time? For the, the last, last time. fucking time, partner. Swear? I swear. All right. Let's hit the road. Oh, man, I missed the first time. Why didn't I get to go to the first time? Let's see the blood stick. Any better? Not really. I'm curious about how they killed her. There were no injuries on her body as far as we could see. Well, if all goes well, we'll learn about that soon. Or not. Or not. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> yes, not all, not all uh, questions have answers. Uh, let's see. Go back to Bubos. Uh, I really don't want to talk to them to be perfectly honest with you. New stand. Should I say it? I know, Sonny. I can still get out. But you won't. On the beak. Thanks, pal. Forget about it. I'd be bored Forget to Forget about it. else in here Actually, look at the map. days left Marty and I'm out of here as soon as I get my discharge papers I'm leaving for the wilderness on the first flight ah you know I envy you a little eh, it's not gonna be the real thing not on my own why don't you take Natasha with you <laughs> what are you even talking about <laughs> come on Sonny cut the act If there's anything else in here. Okay, so we were able to go in there. Uh oh, might as well just finish this off. The sun was shining, and all Last the docks were in a row. I felt ready. The pieces of the grand puzzle were laid out on the table. I just needed to piece them all together. A revealing glance or a careless word. And I'd have the answer. I knew we were in the right place. I knew it was nearly over. Was Natasha really just a victim? Or did she know everything? Was she controlling the puppets from behind the curtain? Well, if you don't know where to go, go straight ahead. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh man, there's a lot. It always looks really angry. Here I am, Natasha. Oh wow, there's color I here. Hope you're waiting for me. Furry gods. I knew he was rich, but he's rich wow. enough to afford color. Half the city is in his hands, Marty, and half the Council of Twelve. I think we'll catch a big fish today. Don't count your chickens. I'm sure Wessler's expecting us. And Natasha, too, I hope. You hope? If I'm right, she could be our only chance of survival. Lovely prospects, huh? <laughs> That's a bad. Worse. Really? What the hell is it? Water tower? Turret? A frickin' lighthouse? That's true. I think it's a monument to an enormous ego, Marty. Well, anyone who builds a tower this big must be trying to compensate for something. Or he just has too much dough. <laughs> trying to see everything. Quite the steed, isn't it? Seems nowadays organized crime pays well in Clawville. <laughs> Are you surprised? The chicken police retired. Well, they say the team's back together again. Yeah, didn't you hear? Ah, that's impossible. Oh, yeah, it's true. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, 
This place has its own greenhouse. What do you think's inside? 100% uh, humidity plants. and unbearable heat. Oh, not like that. <laughs> Could they be growing rarities in there? Or maybe some chicken-eating giant flower monsters. What? Oh, you just made that up, right? Nah, I'm sure there's no such thing. <laughs> Uh, a rat knight? Rat knight. Uh, one of Wessler's ancestors, maybe. Wessler's ancestors were poor cobblers. More likely, this represents what he thinks of himself. I wonder how chivalry is compatible with organized crime. Eben was planning to leave the underworld. When his twin brother tore out his tongue, poked out his eye, killed him, and took his place? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty knightly if you ask me. That sounds like something a knight would do. Oh, I lost my mouse cursor. There we go. Welcome Is back, this mouse cursor. A mansion or a grand palace or a small city? Well, if it comes to hide and seek, Old Westler will have an advantage. A serious advantage. So, oh, glad we could do that. Hey! Not so fast, chickens. Please excuse my partner. He didn't mean to be rude, it's just his uh, terrible habits. As you may already know. Do. Uh. Ah, look what the cat dragged in. Funny, I don't recognize them. Well, maybe if they had some guns with them? Tommy, Tommy guns? Gun. Oh yeah, now Let's I remember. The two suckers in the luxury van you shot to pieces. Twice. Exactly. Oh, what are you doing here, chickens? Would you like us to finish what we started? We'd love to have fun with you boys, but we have a hard time to telling boss. Miss Iser. And while we're at it, the lady of the house is also expecting us. Is that so? Yeah, that's so horny. In that case, I guess there's no reason for us to waste your precious time. Is that right, Gabriel? Like <laughs> how his just bouncer. Feathers on your skin, chickens. Easy, pal. We're not even here anymore. Until next time, boys. Is that really all that's in? Just okay. This must lead to Wessler and Natasha's suite. Well, let's get the big guns out and kick the door down. No need for that, Marty. We'll wait until they invite us in, <laughs> like real gentlemen. Then maybe we'll need the guns, but I hope it won't come to that. Oh, my trigger finger's itching, Sonny. Someone's gotta pay. Relax, Marty. Someone is gonna pay. Tonight. Why not today? Yeah. Just don't today. Let it be us. Oh, it's the crow. It's like the vegetation's trying to suffocate these beautiful walls. Maybe it will. Maybe in a hundred years, nothing will be. That's quite a dark spot. <laughs> yeah. It is. Uh, this place architects. is incredible, but it kind of gives me the creeps. Good kind of creeps. You know what lies behind the beauty. Death. With Natasha, too? I haven't decided yet. Uh, hey, Olivia. Ah, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Olivia. Sweetie. Get lost. Uh, what did you say, ma'am? Turn around and get the hell out of here now, if you want to make it out with feathers intact. <laughs> Come on, Olivia. Don't worry about us. <laughs> we know what we're doing. <laughs> You're right. Huh? Don't you get it? You have to get out of here or you'll be in danger, and also her. Do you mean Natasha? Please calm down, miss. We have to talk to Mr. Wessler and Miss Katsenko. You really don't understand, do you? No, of course not. What do they not understand, Olivia? Oh. So, what is it exactly that our guests don't understand? I was trying to tell the detectives that Mr. Wessler's very tired and doesn't welcome guests this early. He gets rather irate if he's being disturbed at this hour. I'm sure Mr. Featherland and Mr. McChicken can wait here while Ibn refreshes himself. I'll entertain them until then. Thank you, Miss uh, Itsenko. Please, Sonny, 
I thought we've already discussed this. Call me Natasha. Uh, <laughs> uh, please, Natasha, can we talk to you in private? Martin, it's all right, Olivia. These gentlemen are my friends. Yes, Miss Katzenka. Uh, anything else to say? I to warn you. Thanks, Olivia. <sighs> <laughs> Not yet. First, you're right, Sonny. Okay. Talk to her first. The truth is, Ibn isn't really in a good shape today, gentlemen. He's rather furious. Are you sure this can't wait? You commissioned us, Natasha, and we barely escaped with our combs intact. So you know who left the threats? Oh, we know much more than that, Natasha. We even know where you used to work. <laughs> we found out everything. To save us. Wild gods. Why didn't you tell us? Do you think it's easy for a woman to talk about such things that she used to be an escort? Along with wind. Molly. So you know. Yeah, I know, Natasha. I also know all of this was a trap. Believe me, I tried to handle things the least painfully I could. You weren't even supposed to know. A lot shouldn't have happened. Poor Deborah shouldn't have had to die. Dear sweet Deborah. Cold, stiff Deborah. <laughs> Please don't say that. A price worth paying? You cannot think I had anything to do with that. You just cannot. I don't know, Natasha. Please, Sonny, tell me what is going on. You have to know, right? Please. Excuse Boy. me for making you wait, detectives. I'm having a rough morning after a long night. Is that so? Our night was also kind of long, to put it mildly. I was just telling the gentlemen that you were exhausted, my dear, and they should come back another time. I'll escort them out. Oh, honey, no need for that. My door is always open to the legendary chicken police. Please, uh, come on in, guys. Let's uh, talk in my room. Then this way, please. You just stay here, my darling. I'm oh, sure boy. Our conversation will bore you to death. Please, uh, go and refresh yourself or uh, tell Olivia to go make some coffee. Yes, dear. Oh, I like his accent. His Boston like. accent's great. Please, uh, follow me, gents. Lead on, Wessler. So long, sweetheart. Goodbye. Boy, here we go. Table? Yeah. Would you like a drink? This is a rather rare brandy. It lifts the spirits if I may be so uh, poetic. Really? Tempting, but I need to keep a clear head, Mr. Wessler. Yeah, I've heard you don't despise a good vintage. And I've heard you don't despise murder, Wessler. <laughs> By the way, you've heard right. But everything has its place in time. Drinks, guns, dead bodies, and the truth. Yeah, I see you're in a poetic mood as well. More like prophetic. And that's not a good sign. Yeah. Are you trying to intimidate me? No, that's no. not how we do Wait. business. We're gentlemen. I really hope so. Do you keep a revolver in your bedroom? Yeah, a bad habit. One who has a lot to lose has a lot to fear. I agree. Well. Uh, this estate no. is rather impressive, Mr. Wessler. Well, thank you. I suppose it took years and years of cumbersome work to build it. Yeah. As you say, Mr. Featherlin, I'm rather proud of it. You should be. Whoever built this place has a reason to be proud of himself. Are you trying to say something, <laughs> sir? No, no, just thinking aloud. Painting. It's beautiful and rather provocative. Almost makes my comb stand up. I'm not surprised. But the corner is missing. You're right, Sonny. 
You're quite the observer. Well, yeah, this painting's unfortunately damaged. I don't know where this piece could be. Oh, I bet we have it. No. Well, if you're interested, we know exactly where it is. Really? Really. It's here with us. An insignificant little piece, isn't it? But there's an exciting cat scratch on it. More like a rat scratch, because it's a monogram. A W. That's Albert Wessler. He's a great painter. I don't know if you've heard of him. Enough. Out with it already. What are you trying to say? I have no time for your childish charades. Easy, Wessler. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but I like some charades. Impressive bed. Looks cozy. Sure is better than a cell. That's right, Marty. I'm not sure I understand, gentlemen. We'll see about that. All right. Here we go. So, uh, what do you want to know? I've heard you've been through a rather eventful few days. Oh, you have rather good informants. Yeah, that's true. I should tell you, I see and hear everything that happens in the city. And you, uh, you are exceptionally resilient. No offense. None taken. But tell me, are we going to flatter each other for a long time, or are we finally done with the courting? Straight to the point. I like it. Yeah, so let's continue like that, shall we? What do you want? How dare you intrude upon me in my own house? Oh, forgive us. Our moral compass has been confused a little bit after someone tried to kill us several times, <laughs> times in yep. the last 48 <laughs> hours. With fire, with machine guns, I could go on. Poisonous gas. While we're at it, you could answer some of our Poison questions. Beat. If you've nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. And then we'll just leave you alone. All right. I'll go along with your childish little game. I would have had a long and tedious day ahead of me anyway. So, can we start? With pleasure, Mr. Wessler. Uh, oh, we can ask. Uh... I have no idea what she sees in you, but Natasha's been seriously worried about you. Yeah, she uh, really worries more than usual, but it's understandable. Those disgusting messages. Disgusting, all right. Do you know why that word exactly? Why did they write that specific word everywhere? Since, uh, since uh, you've been to the Nile, I guess you know the answer to your question. Didn't it bother you, Wessler, what Natasha used to do? Surely it must have upset you. Why? Did it upset you when you discovered your wife did the same thing? <laughs> what did you just say? Oh boy. What did you think, chicken? When I didn't know? Yeah, don't make me laugh. I know about everyone who ever set foot in that place. I can even tell you who Molly's regulars were, if you're interested. You son of a bitch. Sonny, don't. <laughs> yes, detective? Not yet. You're right, Marty. It's not worth it. You're funny, you know that? Uh, piece of the painting. About the painting. Yeah. My brother Albert made it. He's a great talent, but uh, still, uh, he's a rather troubled individual. Such self-criticism. What did you say? <laughs> My partner means that you and your brother are very much alike. Identical twins, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed. But uh, what does that have to do with the painting? We'll get to that. Don't worry, Mr. Wessler. So Albert made the painting at your request. Is that right? And the one that's in Natasha's room in the Tsar, too. Yeah, exactly. Is that a crime? No, it's not a crime in itself. Uh, this picture, this photo. it's rather strange, you know? Why do you think so? It's just me, Natasha, and my brother. The photo doesn't tell much in itself, yes. But if you already have the right information, suddenly it starts to talk. Really? He fell in love with her, didn't he? Who'd you mean? Albert, of course. He fell in love with Natasha. All those sessions while he was painting the pictures. Were you there every time? You mean, uh, me? 
You. No, I mean, <laughs> well, Albert was painting, yeah, but I wasn't there all the time. Albert was there all along. He's getting confused. Do you think he could have fallen in love with Natasha? That's why he escaped. What do you think happened to him? Who tore out his tongue? Yeah, I have no idea. Did Natasha know about what happened to your brother? No, of course not. Do you love beautiful things, Wesler? I... Eh... Uh, why do you ask that? Yeah, of course. You were afraid of losing her, weren't you? To him. Stop. Enough. If you want to ask something, ask clearly. Don't play with me. You understand? We're just doing our job. Then do it clearly. And quickly. Yeah, I'm really starting to lose my patience. Uh, Albert's we letter. We visited Albert's cell and found something he seems to have uh, forgotten to take with him in his great hurry. That's a big mistake. A classic, even. What the hell are you babbling about? This is Albert Wessler's love letter to Natasha. More like a confession. In which he tells her he's capable of doing anything for her, even the most horrible thing like taking out the trash this letter doesn't prove anything at all albert is mad insane he's not a normal no one would believe his word don't you understand but they believe yours right because you're not albert wessler you're hobart ibn wessler aren't you how good it feels to be in his skin how dare you just tell him sonny I'm getting tired of this. You're just a cheap fake, Albert. You couldn't follow in your brother's footsteps even if you wanted to. No matter how hard you tried, you couldn't get Natasha either. Am I right? What? What did you just say? She hates you, doesn't she? She doesn't know. She doesn't understand why. But she hates you. It's instinctive. Yeah, what do you know? What could you possibly know about suffering and loneliness in the darkness? What could you know about hate, huh? Oh, I question you, but before I do that, we had seven new clues. Oops. Go back. Oh, Albert is Ibn Westland himself. Yeah, I guess this is like the end of the last chapter. Sadly. It was very sad that I guessed the ending. But we'll see how this ends up. Let's see if there's any other clues. Oh, I actually have a picture for him. He's a dangerous lunatic. That he is. Albert is an imposter. He's not who he says he is, and might not even know who he really is. I have to concentrate on this first, to okay. soften him up, and to avoid us being shot in the gizzard, of course. Uh, I mean, Marty has a gun, so I mean... What were you thinking, Albert? How long did you think you could keep it up? Until the end of my life, if needs. Yeah, it's nice that it just does this like... Not for who Ibn was, but for who I am. Why did you think that would happen? Everybody noticed the change. Yeah, I knew it would be hard, Santino. But I also knew animals see what they want to see. Eh, I didn't have to behave like Ibn. They only had to believe I'm him. Uh... Poster manipulator. Why did you decide to take your brother's place? Yeah, as you're curious. From the moment I laid eyes on Natasha for the first time. But I had to convince myself that this was the only way. You've never talked about your feelings for Natasha with your brother. Am I right? Are you insane? Yeah, Abel would have had me killed immediately. And no one would ever know. So instead, you've done the same thing, haven't you? What a comfortable excuse. That's how you tell their brothers. Do you think all of this was just some kind of cruel game for me? 
I had to destroy the person I loved and respected the most. Cry me a river. You know, there's only a thin, fragile membrane between love and hate. If anything touches it, it tears immediately. You've felt like this before, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Eh, I can see Ollie. it in your eyes. You can analyze me until the sun goes down, Wessler. But you won't get far with that. Yeah, evasive answer. So I'm right. A fifteen. Why did you have to mutilate Ibn? Why didn't you just kill him immediately? That's an interesting question, you see, but the, the answer is exceptionally simple. No matter how strange it is for you to understand, I loved my brother. Weird way of showing you love, Albert. You can't understand that. He was my everything, the only one who was close to me. Until I met Natasha. She took your brother's place pretty quickly, didn't she? There's not much room in your heart as I see it. Yeah, you're understanding the situation, Detective, but you know, uh, very well it's not that simple. Ibn was my brother. I loved him despite all of his flaws and foul, petty lies. Well, they didn't kill him. I couldn't kill him. Not immediately, you mean? Unfortunately, tearing out his tongue wasn't enough. Yeah, I must admit I've, uh, underestimated him. And poking out his eye? Oh, uh, that was just an accident, Mr. Featherland. <laughs> just an accident? You're a dirty, clucking son of a vermin, Albert. Please, uh, don't be vulgar, Sonny. It's too dangerous in your current situation, and doesn't even suit you. Uh, minus ten. Uh... Does it make you happy yes, well. to control others, Albert? I was never the type. Not until I become one with my brother. He was different. He lived for this. He wanted to rule everything he set his gaze upon. Haven't you done the same with Natasha? I did, Detective. Yeah, exactly the same. And that's when I started to become one with my brother. Do you mean before brutally mutilating and killing him? Yeah. Long before that, Detective. Oh, I'm getting a lot of minuses. What made you think you could deceive Natasha? I'm not doing very good. Because Natasha loved Ibn in her own unique way. Yeah, and if there's anything that can blind an animal, it's love and hate. Everything revolves around these two things, Mr. Featherland. Is everything black and white to you? Just about. No. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Everything is gray in this world. Only two things have color. What? Love and hate. I see you understand now, Sonny. Yeah, we're not that different, you and I. Albert, you're everything I'm not. And I'm everything you're not, believe me. Yeah, if that makes it easier for you, detective. Uh, plus two. That was your plan. Take his place and live happily ever after. Yeah, it's a pretty good plan. Isn't it good enough of a plan, Mr. Featherland? It was perfect, even in its imperfection. Which is? Ibn's ghost. Is, is, is what? what? <laughs> oh, please don't take it literally, Mr. Chicken. I'm not talking about the uh, spirits. When Ibn died, I didn't just take his place, but also his role. He himself, uh, his essence, if you will. Thoughts, yeah. yeah, though I guess that's uh, too much for you to understand. So you mean Ibn's here with us even now? He was here all along. Don't you get it? I am Hobart Ibn Wessler. I must get serious, because looking at the gun in Wessler's trembling hand, I'm afraid I don't have much time. Albert is a cruel psychopath, but maybe I can turn that cruelty against it. Okay, well, we got plus 20. When was the moment you decided to kill him, Albert? When I drew the last stroke on that fatal painting, Mr. Fiddleland. When I glanced at it for the last time, and then at Natasha, who was shivering under the weight of my gaze. You simply fell in love with her? End of story? Not in the slightest, Mr. Fiddleland. Love is, uh, just chemistry. 
What I felt was more than that. Everybody thinks that, Albert. But we all feel the same. We're just fools. Fools no, and love. Fenderland. Not at all. At that moment, I knew what I was gonna do. I knew that the world was coming to an end if I didn't do it. It implodes on itself and ceases to exist. I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't. Yeah. Let him have her, right? You simply wanted her for yourself. I wanted her for ourselves, Sonny. I was him by then. He just didn't know it yet. Alrighty. Oh gosh. Uh Oh gosh, I have no What did you do that made everything so locked up? It's a sharp tongue detective. It oh. just came to me, you know? <laughs> Where did it all start? Where did all the hate and jealousy come from? Jealousy? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Oh, come on, Albert. Alone, locked up at the end of the world, while your brother is one of the most influential figures of Clawville, driving an expensive car, living in a mansion, with the city's most desirable woman in his bed. Why wouldn't you be jealous? Yeah, Albert was jealous of Ibn. Maybe he still is, but I understand why he did it. Albert was beyond control and dangerous. What does that mean exactly? Albert did our mother wrong. Poor old mom. She never heard her fly. But Albert couldn't take that she was praising his brother all the time while Albert was just an unsuccessful, foolish, poor painter. What did you do to her, Albert? Albert killed her. God it like an accident, but uh, Emma knew it wasn't. That was the last straw. Albert had to be locked up, and he agreed. He never said no to his brother. But he never forgot who did this to him either, did he? Ibn was really good to him. Visited him every week. Did everything he could. Even introduced Natasha in the end. And that was his downfall. Both of them, Sonny. And yours, too. That oh, was a plus, though. Uh... Did you hate Ibn or yourself more, Albert? Albert hated himself the most ever since he was born. He, uh, he idolized Ibn. But every time his brother stood before him, he saw what he could have been himself if he had enough strength. But he didn't. Albert had always been a coward, a, a pitiful nobody. Sad. No. Finally, there's no more Albert. And no more Eben either. It's only me. And for both of them, I'm perfect. Can it be that the fear is making you say these things, Albert? Stop calling me that. I have to call you something. What should I call you? What name should I use? Uh, I, I don't know any more. I... I don't. I'm very close to breaking him, but if I'm too hard on him, uh -oh. I could quickly be signing my death warrant. It's time to dig a little bit deeper. Oh, my wife. Natasha was kind to you, right? Too kind. Natasha was uh, simply amazing, gentle, kind, lively, but still so uh, distant. You're telling me. <laughs> it's like she was from another world. A world where everything's full of charm and grace and everything's fragile and delicate. Uh, do you understand? I think I do, yes. I knew Albert's touch would harm her. Albert is rough. Albert can't keep such a delicate thing in his arms. That's why you had to become Ibn, am I right? I didn't take Ibn's place, Mr. Featherland. I became one with him, can't you see? This is the only way I could comprehend and accept the miracle that was Natasha. Was? I... I think I've corrupted her. She's not that gentle and pure creature I painted on the canvas anymore. I ruined her. She became rotten under my hands. 
a plus 15. Maybe the truth it's not ended. Too late, Albert. Tell her the truth and end this. No. You can't understand this. She can't either. I killed Ibn, but he also killed me. In case you see, we're nothing without each other. You can't be two people at the same time, Albert. Nobody can bear the weight of the sins of two souls. Ibn loved her. I admired her. Ibn was crazy about her. I've been crazy for a long time. <laughs> Ibn idolized her. We've all been crazy. I Get over it, Wesler. And if there's anything more blind, more devoted, more extreme, and more true than love, it could only be hate, Mr. Featherland. It's an endlessly exciting, thrilling, and warm feeling. And infinitely red. Just like love. You know you're not going to be able to go through with it, right? That you won't be able to carry the weight. But you still did it. Why? Yeah. If I didn't kill him and become one with him, Albert would have died, Mr. Featherland. And the threats? Which one of you was that? Albert or Ibn? Who wrote them? And which one of you killed Deborah? In my world, Ibn and I are inseparable. Just like love and hate are one and the same. And I hate Natasha so much that I could destroy myself along with her just so she would die with me. Are you familiar with this feeling, Mr. Featherland? More than life itself. You see? We're not so different after all. You and I have nothing in common, Wessler. You know why? Why, Mr. Featherland? Because if I were in your shoes, I would have pulled the trigger a long time ago. Goodbye, Sonny. So long, Albert. Uh, yeah, 60% again. Try it. It's good to get shot. Or us. She gets there. Nope. Oh, it was shot. Nope. Oh, it was shot. By Natasha. So, you heard everything. I heard everything. I'm sorry you had to find out like this. And thank you. If it weren't for you... Yes, both of you would be dead, I know. <laughs> but believe me, I still thought carefully before firing. About who to target? You know, I truly loved Ibn. But this man wasn't him. You felt it, didn't you? Maybe I even knew it. I don't know. But I still can't believe it. It won't be easy to process for any of us. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. And regarding Molly... Oh, can't hear it. The cops? But how? How do they know? I have no idea, Marty. Do not look at me. I do not <laughs> call them. Olivia? Don't worry, Natasha. They won't lay a finger on you. I promise. Please, Sonny. You don't need to worry about me. I don't want to be rude, Sonny, but I'm more worried about us than That's her. That's very true. Hello, boss. Hello, boys. Now, before you say anything, we can explain. No need for that, Sanjino. Monica already told oh, shoot. everything. Monica? Hey, boys. What were you thinking? That I would just let you get killed without saying goodbye? Yeah, Thanks, I think so. Mon. Should we say we uh, owe you one? You know already, boys. Shoes are my weakness. <laughs> hey, mine too. Of all that's furry, we don't want to hear that. And boys. Uh, yes, boss. Don't believe you'll get away with it so easily. I want a report on my desk from both of you with all the details. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It'll all make sense, believe us. Right after I figure out myself what the hell just happened. What Marty's trying to tell you is that we had good reason to investigate outside the law. But... We're sorry. Aw. Oh, you apologize like a big you bird. You're sorry? Did you hit your head? Why does everybody keep asking that? Why indeed? So, can we go now, boss? 
without getting handcuffed? Don't give me ideas, Santino. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Stop calling me boss. I'm not your boss. I guess we could just talk to everybody. So, what now? Where to next? I think I should mourn, right? You should. Well, maybe. But I don't know what to feel anymore, Sonny. I understand, Natasha. You know, if you need anything... Yes, I know where to find you. See you around, sweetheart. Ma'am? Goodbye, detectives. How the hell did you find your way here, Tim? Always where the trouble is. Sometimes I think you're the criminal mastermind behind all the dark dealings in this city. That's Lewis. <laughs> I wish. I wish too, because then we could legally throw you in jail. <laughs> I love your sense of humor, Sonny. <laughs> I wasn't joking. So, where did you get the scoop? Are you kidding me? The whole city's talking about you. <laughs> You've left quite the mess behind. I'm sorry. That, I admit. Well, it's a miracle that all of the city smear sheet journalists aren't here already. Oh, while we're at it, will you give me an exclusive interview? No. Fuck off, Tim. Hey! Oh, cool. Thanks again, Mon. If not for you, those fur heads would... No wonder, since you put holes in there, boss. Well... Actually, that wasn't Dude, us. It's all up there. And who was it? Natasha. Really? Hmm. I wouldn't have thought it. It was for us, too. Believe me. What? Are you waiting for me to change my mind? I am, yeah. yeah. No, sir. Then stop pecking around. Yes, sir. And I can't exactly leave, either. Map's turned off. Hey, Olivia. Marty? I just, uh... For what exactly? For trying to save us. I didn't do it only for you, believe me. I loved my job while I had it. <laughs> now my employee is dead, so I don't... I didn't even... Of course you didn't. Can I do anything to help? I think I'll manage. It's a Bosco. You're a good boy, Bosco. <laughs> nice work. Gosh. You know, folks, somebody's got to take care of the real poop. Sorry for the mess, Bosco, but... Yeah, unfortunately... How did you catch them? After the gunshot, I was sure these two would show up. They were already in cuss before then, Sonny. We oh, sure. were surrounded. If you could have... Hey, a second longer and it... <laughs> that should... Cluck you sideways, but... Gentlemen. Gentlemen. <laughs> we're honestly very... So yeah, this piece for myself. I'm glad, gentlemen. I would have sincerely regretted I like the if we had to shoot both of you, but unfortunately, that seemed to be the only solution to this uh, rather nasty situation. Fortunately, it didn't turn out that way. Joyful. Hooray. Don't think we'll be behind bars for long chickens. Whistler may be dead, but his empire still won't crumble. He's got no head of the look empire. At that. He can talk in complex sentences. Yeah, or something like amazing. <laughs> Yar. I hope we'll meet. So do I, Shake. Maybe I will. I certainly hope so. Um. I don't know what I'm missing. The last clue, yeah. Is there still more clues? Is it really over? Well, I don't know. And what about you, Sonny? I'll go home and sleep. Maybe for three days. Oh, three day weekend. I'll Look at you. Forget. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. If there's anything I can do. Give me a hug. I'm not sorry, Natasha. It's better this way. We find out painful truths, but at least we see clearly now, don't we? Yes. I think you're right. Oops. But just one quote, guys. They say you've taken down the whole Wessler Empire. They say... 
I say you're full of shit, Tim, and you can quote me on that. That's the same. We didn't take down the whole empire. How did you know we were here? I always pay it. No. Don't get used to it. Santino. No, sir. No. Then get the fuck. I mean, I'd like to leave, but I don't know how. So, uh, what's your shoe, son? 35, Sonny. I like high heels. Anything for you. I don't want just... Yes, ma'am. See you at the PD? At the PD, man. See you at the... At the PD. Okay, that's all I've heard. Talking. Santino. You do it. No, sir. Never. Then get the fuck. I would, but I can't. Santino. No, sir. Then get the. I still can't leave. But just one quote, guy. I say you're full of. Sh but just. One I say you. Yeah, I already hit that like it does times. Thank you. We thank you, Natasha. You saved our lives. But it was also me who endangered you in the first place, right? It was, yeah. Well, I won't argue about that. Still can't leave. Thank you. We well, I. Oh, Fillmore. What are you doing over here? You. What are you doing here? I was just driving around. You know. Yeah, Trying sure. To feed your grandpa. So, was it a case? Were you? What can I say, Sonny? Am I busted? Did someone hire you to follow us? I just had to keep an eye on you and not get involved. That's all. I admit there were a couple of crazy <laughs> situations. Yes, there was. Hard not to. But you managed somehow. A professional's a professional. Man. Yeah, thanks. So you won't. Unfortunately, I can't, my friend. You and your promises. Some people still take them seriously. You're a real piece of guano. Of course. I've learned everything from you, you old fart. I think I have an idea who... Hey, stop it right there. I don't want to know who... Oh, are you afraid your reaction would get... Uh, you wish... Anyway, it's good to see you here. I'm glad you made it out alive. Yeah, not much. So, here they yep, are, there ladies we go. and gentlemen. The chicken police in the flesh. Ah, oh, I like his old school camera. And drop it and cluck off. Oh no, boys. This time, you deserve it. What the cluck did you say, boss? Stand up straight and try to look <laughs> like someone who's glad to be alive. Uh, yes, sir, we'll try. Ooh, attention, chicken police. Say cheese. <laughs> Why is somebody else at fault? <laughs> uh. Oh, look, the following animal species are not included. P a pupfish, paddlefish. That's because during the development of the game, all the species have been declared extinct. Oh. enjoyed it. That was a good, good, decent amount of fun. The story sadly was predictable. But still, uh, the voice lines were great. Exploring was fun. There wasn't much interaction. Um, but the story was okay. No more else to say to it at this point. They had specific people with the model bodies. Oh, look, there's the touch of the camera.
me turning back. I'm tired of a real special thanks to the special people. Naomi Miyazaka's All for Dreams and Nightmares already. <laughs> and it's dead. Be continued like it ever was. Natasha, you were expecting me, weren't you? I wouldn't say that, but I'm not surprised. I just wanted to talk to you about what exactly you know very well. What do you think, Natasha? Why didn't she tell me? Because she loved you. Oh, shit. If it wasn't for you, she may have never left the place. Perhaps she'd still be there. Ah, oh, sheep shit. <laughs> we used to dream about falling in love with a nice man who comes and saves us someday. A knight in shining armor. You know, like, like in the fairy tales. And how did that work out for you? She fell in love with a good guy. I didn't. I envy her. I'm not that good guy, Natasha. But Especially if it's when she got away from you. She could have found him. Maybe she's living with him right now. Somewhere on the other side of the world. Well, goodbye, Sonny. So long, sweetheart. Hey, Natasha, you have a light? I've been trying to smoke this sorry-ass cig all day. It's driving me crazy. Maybe you don't really need it. Hm. Maybe you're right. Maybe. Sorry, it's in the middle of an ad break, but uh, thanks to everybody for stopping by. This is going to be the last kind of two hour stream. Uh, the schedule will be posted tomorrow. Kind of get something more set in line. Something a bit more fun. I kind of doubt it. We don't ever do fun things around here, but uh, thanks everybody for playing with me, sitting through this adventure with me. Uh, we'll maybe play more single player after this. We'll see. Have a good night. Good day.